Rivers are great. For millennia they helped us survive, enabled us to build the first cities and civilizations and allowed us to travel and trade. And for millennia we also used rivers as borders. The Romans famously used the rivers Rhine and Danube as borders to the empire since they offer natural protection against external invaders. Even today rivers are useful as borders. There are hundreds of rivers forming international borders or internal administrative borders for things like cities. But there is one thing that rivers do which borders should not. They eventually change, either naturally or for human intervention, and this can create conflict. And where else could the best example for this problem be found than here, the Balkans, more specifically at the border between Croatia and Serbia, where the Danube divides the two countries from each other. Or does it? Because if you ask Croatia, the borders should look differently, with larger bits of Croatia on the river's east side and smaller bits of Serbia on its west side, which reflects the shape of the Danube from the 19th century. But why are the claims so different? Throughout the 19th century, both sides of this part of the Danube were in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and they used the Danube as an internal border between municipalities. However, by the end of the 19th century, the Austrians began to significantly change the course of the Danube to straighten it, but it did not change the borders of the municipalities to reflect this new course. One world war later, and the area would become part of the new kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, shortly after renamed to Yugoslavia, which simply kept the Austrian municipality borders in the region. Another world war later, and Yugoslavia was taken over by the communist partisans led by Josip Broz, also known as Tito. He envisioned Yugoslavia to be a federal socialist nation and so special committees were established to define the federal borders. That commission decided that the border between Croatia and Serbia should follow the Danube, but both sides had different views on what this actually meant. Serbia wanted the border to follow the exact course of the Danube, while Croatia wanted the border to roughly follow the Danube, without breaking the borders of the Croatian municipalities which the Austrians once established. So, a new committee was formed to solve this issue. The result, they simply postponed the problem by deciding that the border would temporarily correspond to Croatia's claim until a future committee would solve it indefinitely. But this future committee never came and nobody really cared because it was after all Yugoslavia. Until it wasn't. One Yugoslav war later and here we are. In practice the borders correspond with Serbia's claim as they control all the land on the river's east side. Nonetheless, Croatia still insists that the borders need to be changed, which could have a huge impact on Serbia's EU integration process. Croatia is using its EU membership to pressure Serbia into giving into their demands, since they could simply block Serbia's accession to the European Union. Regardless, there is another aspect of this conflict which made it famous in 2015. While Croatia and Serbia both claim this land on the east side of the river, None of the two is claiming these smaller pockets on the west side. According to Serbia, the green lands belong to Croatia and according to Croatia, it belongs to Serbia. A Czech politician, Vitjet Lička, noticed that both nations didn't seem to want that land, so he decided to go to the biggest of these unclaimed pockets called Siga and proclaim a new country, the nation of Liberland. It has its own flag, a state motto and even a website. What it doesn't have, however, is infrastructure and actual population living in Siga, and maybe most importantly, recognition. And that's a big issue for Liberland, because once this conflict is resolved, Liberland will likely have to move. But for now, there has been very little progress. In 2006, both governments agreed on transforming one disputed river island, Vukova Island, into a public park and beach for the citizens of both nations without border controls. But that's about it. Whether this border dispute will be resolved anytime soon remains to be seen. And although I can't say who is in the right regarding this issue, I know who is at fault here. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Austria. Thanks for watching Politics with Paint. I recently passed 200 subscribers and I'm very happy that you people seem to enjoy my videos. Thank you and until next time, bye.